That should work. Hey, what is up, Design Squad? If you can see me, if you can see me on a stream, push the heads up or something along those lines, you should be able to hear and see me. But as per usual, where there are all those different little bits and different technical bobs, which just doesn't seem to work fully. So if you can see me, give a thumbs up or say hello. I can see already six people on the live stream. That's great news. Um, let me just just ping me if if you can see, can see and hear. Awesome. All right, so let's crack on. I'm not gonna take too much of your time or more than I need to because this is a super complex live stream and super complex. Uh, tutorial at that so let's let's talk the business basically and today I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to make at least at the basic level a prototype for a functional game where your users can play it with their keyboard uh, keys let's say or a click or whatever but it's gonna be a functional mechanics for a new game and in my in my material I shared and you know thumbnail you probably saw already a few different bits of what I want it to be so I'm gonna use this specific look and feel from opengamer.org uh, heads, heads, heads off to Kenny um, if you want to support him do so on Patreon but he produced these assets which I then gonna go and explore and try to use in you know in everything we do going forward on Axure. So it's it's a starting point basically. And I'm gonna talk to you in a minute exactly what we're gonna do. But to begin with, I might make it a series because this is such a complex case where it could be that, you know, we're gonna have like 10 episodes or five minimum at least because there's just so many different bits you need to consider when you make a game. And if you made, let's say, a game in Flash or, you know, those old school technologies, you know how many different points you have to consider. So let's start very minimal. And, and to be honest, what I want to make today is the basics for this game, this mini game you all played probably on your browsers when you have no internet. And that happens in Chrome when, let's say, you have no connection. You can press, I think, enter or space and then this minigame resumes where you can have a score um, in the hopes that the internet is going to come back. So this is what I'm going to try to make using those assets, you know, and actual engine, uh, the code engine, interaction engine to kind of make something like this happen. So bear with me. I never done this before. You know, most of my tutorials is something I did in the past, let's say, or have like a think an idea of how it could be achieved with this one. I didn't do anything at all. I just have a rough idea of how it could be achieved. And just to break down immediately, in my head, I have two different scenes. Um, one scene is a start. So where you, for example, kickstart something, you could start a game immediately, you know, on page load in action. That's the easiest option. The harder option is to make a trigger and then trigger all the other bits because we're going to have moving parts. We are going to have a lot of different bits. And as you can see in my Miro board here on this uh, digital whiteboard, I'm going to mark different bits uh, on it. I can see there are a few comments already excited to see this, seeing the process is great as seeing better ways to use the tools. Awesome. Hey, Kim. Hey, Kamlesh. Hey, Cosmos Beta, Spyridon, DDFO. I might be butchering your names here and there, so forgive me, but thanks for tuning in. Let me let me first explain how I would structure this game, let's say. I have these specific bits here, and I hope you can see on, on the screen, but what I would do first and foremost, I would make our hero as a dynamic panel, because that hero would have to contain a default state, maybe a GIF where you have running, let's say, or something like that. I'm gonna make it as static and as simple as I can so you understand where I'm coming from. There's going to have to be a state where you fail. There's going to have to be a success state. So you need to do that as a dynamic panel. Another dynamic panel, which I could think of is the obstacles or, you know, all those enemies, whatever our hero is going to encounter. Hey, AOZ, AOZ design. 
or IOZ. I don't know how to pronounce that yet, uh, but welcome. Thanks for joining us. And the last bit, which I think what I'm going to use is this text field, apart from, of course, the background and things of that nature, which are going to be other bits. Like, for example, maybe this is going to be dynamic panel or something, but, you know, it's assistive information. It doesn't have to be like super duper. But this is as a text field, as a score, we are going to have to also use a global variable to contain it. And that's the basics. It's almost like these are going to be the key players. Maybe you're going to want to do another dynamic panel for the cloud. So we move like in parallax effect. It depends what you want to do. Maybe it's a background as well. But I'm going to just quickly bunch it all together. So we have a start and then we're going to try to prototype very basic interaction where this, you know, this cactus or whatever is going to be the enemy is going to be moving across the timeline and we are going to try to jump with the keyboard, just one key. And that's going to provide you with ability to then go and explore, unpack it, you know, make your own games going forward. And it's kind of like, a, I guess, a setup for a basic platformer game. So let's see how much we can cover in maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes, because I know you don't want to sit here for two, three hours watching me just babble and, and trying to do something which, you know, it takes time. So let's let's go ahead and just do it. Um, right off the bat, first and foremost, what I'm going to want to do is to just find our hero. Again, I'm using this free uh, free resource from uh, opengamesr.org. It's by Kenny. You can just Google. You're definitely going to find it. It's one of the top resources. And I'm just going to find our player. I think I'm going to maybe uh, take the jumping player. Uh, the hurt flare. I guess what happens if we fail and I don't see any running, which would be ideal, but hey, you cannot have it all right. So I may be gonna have something like uh, what what could we do? Maybe I'm gonna use that as a jumping and that as a running. So let me just call it a running running man, whatever running pill, I guess. This is going to be hurt and that is going to be jumping with the belly in. Um, and I'm just going to make that as a dynamic panel. So this is going to be our hero. Uh, let's call it a hero. Uh, simple as that. If you alternate between jump and run, that would look like running maybe. You mean like shifting from one to the other? Hmm, maybe. It's something which we can always add fidelity in the end, but that's a good idea. Maybe, you know, it might involve even illustration where you want to just alter the tiny legs here and there. So, but I might leave it up to you because there is a lot of stuff to be done. Um, I see Don Van joined us as well, Polis, uh, a lot of people. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining, guys. And, and gals, thanks for participating in this. But I'm really quickly just going to make a hero. For those who joined late, uh, just remember to see, you know go back, maybe watch first 10 minutes so you know where I'm coming from. It's not going to be too much of a surprise, basically, um, where I arrive. But let's start with this. So let's say this is our uh, running state, right? Again, I'm just going to set it up really quickly. This is going to be jumping. And then last one is going to be, let's say, uh, hurting. Very simple. Um, and then I'm just going to copy those bad boys in. So in jumping, let's just replace, if I may, place it in the same spot so it nicely overlaps, like so. Maybe you're right, Kim. Maybe we can just skip it. But I'm, I'm going to leave it for now very simply. Um, quite static. I think the GIF would work the best, really, but you know, it it's depends how much time you want to spend on it, then you can make it super. Um, right, so this is our hero. Now the next, let me see what we have in our library of, of the game assets. Um, you can see there is some walking sprites as well, so you could 
potentially make a GIF in Photoshop. Maybe I'm going to make in part two how to do so, just how to add more fidelity. Um, HUD, we don't really need it yet. Maybe for the score. Tiles, background. I uh, don't know if I like that blue. Maybe I'm just going to keep it white. I don't know, just going to drag it in. Enemy styles. Where is the background? Okay, I think this is kind of it. So this is probably going to be our grass or something along those lines. So just let me take it like so. And just copy it in. Let's just make a very simple platformer. Um, let me just quickly. You see, what, what you don't see in my tutorials is that there is a lot of speed up. So all of this, I would just fly through with, uh, with you know, a speed up of a video. Um, so you don't have to get bored of, of seeing me doing this like minutia. Um, okay, let me see maybe a little bit more because ideally you would want, you know, to move different planes and parallax and stuff. So I'm just going to keep it like that. So you cannot see the start and the beginning. And if I preview, let's see where we're at. That's pretty good as a start, right? Cool. All right, let's go back and let me just add that background, the bluish baby blue, something along those lines, push it to the back. That should do the trick. Yeah, that's that's good enough for a mini game. Um, and now we have our hero, right? But we don't have any enemies. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to add a new enemy or, or a new um, some sort of thing of, of sorts. Maybe we can use one of these green boys, but they look too happy. We need something which is a bit. Uh, I like that arrow just to show the direction. Um, torch? Nope. Let's let's look for enemies. We can use the green lad. We can use this thing, the red one, a snail. All right, I'm just going to drag them all in. And as you can see, it's as easy as that. Just making it. Let's do that. Ooh, that that's Let's, let, let's make him a bit smaller. And just like I shown you in the demo of what we're after, we are going to do it one by one, basically. So let me see if I can position that. And that's probably is okay for our, like the basic, basic scene of the game. Okay, and let's preview really quick. Again, previewing just to see. So this is our hero idea is that we are basically going to animate the underlying um, background as well as these things which are coming off. And just like in the demo before, let me just really quickly bring it up. <clears throat> just like that, we would create a mini game basically. So we need to connect a few bits here, right? Um, and ideally, you wouldn't want to attach all of your logic, all of your conditions to the hero, you would want to do as many um, logical bits, I guess, or interactive animated bit to the objects. And that's where let's say objective programming would come into play um, in game, de game development and, and programming in general. Because you want to you know, you don't want to replicate too much code, let's say, but you also don't want to overlay a singular atom or a component. And so I'm going to make the background as a dynamic panel. And I'm just going to push it a little bit backwards, maybe even to back. But then as well, push the actual background back because once you create a dynamic panel, it usually puts it up. And then I'm going to make also dynamic panels out of these bad boys. So this is a dynamic panel. Enemy one, let's say. 
And to start off with, just for this session, for this live run through, I'm going to make just one enemy move and one background move and then this one jump, let's say with a keyboard shortcut if we want to go up. So what I'm going to do next is we can probably add on page load, even if in my quote unquote very rudimentary uh, wireframe, I shown you a start button. I think we can just um, initiate that all with just adding page interaction. So on page interaction, I'm going to add uh, on page loaded, meaning that everything in the DOM, every element is preloaded in the JavaScript, it's going to launch an event. And that's where we're going to move one of those bad boys. So I'm going to select our enemy one. And I'm just going to move it by let's say minus 55 pixels per half a second. Let's try that out. Let's see how that would look like. Just moved a bit. But now, as you can see, once we initiate, once we trigger one of the bits, it just stopped. So what we can do next and what, what we must do next is to allow I guess we need to re-trigger the event. So it's kind of like a looping thing until we tell it not to do so. So what we can do is we can attach to an on move event to the actual enemy. And, and let me show you how. So I would just select an enemy. I would click new interaction and so find moved. In the previous actual versions, this has been called an on move event, I think. But if you select moved, then you can just say move that bad boy. So it's kind of like it's going to check whenever it moves, it's going to keep on moving it. It's going to just keep on rotating. It's going to call itself out to keep on moving if it's moving, if that makes sense. It's it's we're going to create like an evil loop for that enemy. And we can also just keep on moving it. So we can move it by, I don't know, let's call, let's do the minus 55 for each half a second or so and linearly because then it, it, there's not going to be kind of like a jolting uh, from slowdowns and stuff. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I think it's pretty cool. Um, so far, so good. Let's now think of what we can do next. So we have our enemy and this is a mean, mean, uh, mean slug, right? Um, what we can do next is also maybe let's move the background and I think we could make it maybe make it like a nifty parallax effect. So let me see if I can also add an action to move. Uh, let's see, where is our background bit dynamic panel? It didn't name it. Cardinal sin of actual prototyping always may name background bit whatever, always name your your thing. So you know how to call it out, you don't have to look for it, you know, tons of times. And I'm gonna move it by a, let's maybe do it slower. So maybe 50 or so pixels. Again, linear, I'm gonna make it just because so it's reduces jolting. And it's a bit slower than our slug. And then on moved again, I'm gonna start trigger the same exact loop. So once the background is moved, it's going to keep on moving. Um, and let me just move it. Uh, where is it background bit by and then let's do another 50 and minus 50 here because it's on an x axis is going to move it from one side to the other side. And, and that should play pretty well, I think. Um, let's see if that works actually. It did, but then it stopped. Okay, let's see what what why that could be. Maybe because it ran out of of this. Let's see. It could be some some tricky bit. Again, it's it's minor detail, but let me just put it and see if if we can actually extend it. It's a bit of a hack. You naturally would want to maybe reposition it back in front so it can keep on moving. Let's try again. Hmm. No. Okay. 
let's see let's see what 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 could have been an issue if we keep on moving it minus 50 oh let's try to do it by time maybe that's why it got stuck yeah okay not too bad not too bad you can kind of see that it's a bit slower so let me reduce it a little bit more again you as a designer as a as a prototyping expert should play with these things because again it's it's how you want the things to be like let's preview if it's just a tad slower yeah you can see a bit of a parallax effect going on that's pretty good all right let's let's keep it at that for now at least we can animate a few bits we are making the game happen um a sip break take a sip guys take a snack if you need to um and next what we can do is we can make our hero jump up and down now actually has this built-in functionality to detect if you have a key pressed so what we can do is we can literally just say actually could we do that could we just say new interaction and on key up or key down i think we could attach it to the actual frame as a whole instead of to the hero again just to make it less more objective than 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 anything else so i can make new interaction on key down on key up on key down means then we press a specific key on key up means then we release the key so i'm just gonna say key down i can say move and then we basically are going to move our bad boy up or down so it's going to jump over the obstacles and i'm just going to select that property we're going to select our hero and we might move it by because it's going to go rev up the y-axis maybe let's add it to 200 or so not going to animate it but we need to specify the time so I'm gonna just do it linear again, and I'm gonna do it maybe, I don't know, 600 or something like that, 600 ms, just a little bit more than half a second, it's gonna go up. And if we test it, I think that should work. Okay, wrong direction, <laughs> it dropped down. Okay, so we need to make, um, minus 200 Ooh, and switch the camera as well oh back to business so basically um i set to add to the y-axis and then it pushed down so you need to do it minus so it could go up it's a bit opposite but at least that would work and if i launch it and i go up it just flies off now it should return naturally and maybe the timing should be a bit adjusted so let me just go back and I'm also going to just push those other enemies aside for now, at least. We don't need it. And so what I'm going to do also, I'm going to return it, meaning then the key is out of it. So key up. And this is where we haven't yet specified which key. So potentially I could just press any key on a keyboard and that would initiate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return it back to the base. And what we want to do is just capture those um, placement co coordinates per se. So it, which is basically 87 by 141 X and Y axis. So that's really important. So I'm just going to return that bad boy to, was it 87, 141, I think, right? So it's just going to jump up and then down immediately linear 600 let's say we can play with those values of how much and for what time you, you can then be super specific if you want to so let's play that out let's see how that goes whoop not bad i mean it, it does work it's a bit sluggish it's almost like there is no gravity in it right but it does work so and i'm, I'm by the way i'm pressing the keyboard up and down 
well up and then it returns down on its own so i'm just pressing the up arrow up i don't know if you can hear it and then we're gonna run out of uh runway here but that's totally fine cool so that does work right now what maybe we could do next is just to reduce the height maybe i don't know if that would help maybe one six hundred and then 500 or something just to make it a bit more air flag jump let's see if that works right let's see yep a bit more realistic but i can also see that we would need to play with um it i think it touches that we can find out if it touches and i'm going to show you how we can actually detect if our hero touched this bad boy so what we can do for, but first actually sorry not to not to, not to overrun i'm getting too excited and, and ahead of myself what we want to do is map the key as well so that the right key is selected uh so the users let's say know which you which key you want them to press and then you can add a note underneath that hey um use arrow key up or something like that to dodge the um, enemies whatever um th th something like that and i'm j this is just pulling uh shooting from the hip basically but you get the drill i can then go ahead maybe find an icon or something like that i'm using noun project for this superb app for prototyping because you don't have to break your head and 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 overthink stuff you can quickly prototype things and leave the high fidelity work for later or if you're a ux designer you can just delegate it basically to people who are talented and skilled in visual or ui design so it's a bit of a cheat but that's totally fine and we can do something like this and imagine that this is our help for our end user i'm just gonna quickly make a dynamic panel out of that call it help and i'm also gonna make it sticky so just pin it to a browser to left bottom and with a margin maybe of 20 or so okay and let's preview it okay you can't really see it but it's there it's basically just a helpful thing that our users know exactly what to do don't forget about that because you need to onboard them um, and that's a minimal you can actually do and next as i said we are going to map out the keys so as you can see move we can add a case so enable cases and we're going to say if uh da, 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 key pressed equals key value and here you just need to press the keyboard and it's going to log that up and the key key down well key up sorry you can then map the same thing or you can just keep it because it's just going to register any key um you don't use it's just going to return our you know martian whatever you call it the green man back to earth basically so that's that now every time i'm going to press that key of the arrow up it's going to do that but not none other basically if you press anything else it's just going to return the guy back because that's the default view and let me just test it out for my own sanity for my own sake boom boom and if i press something else nope that works as expected all good in the neighborhood cool right so next now that we have the basics the mechanics sort of done let's do something more to it and i'm cautious of the time as well so i'm gonna maybe add another one or two things and then we can keep it to the next live session or so if you like if you like this type of stuff um you know maybe it's it could be next weekend or so we can always pick up more and more and add more fidelity more logic you can do it on your own as well it's quite easy you know it takes half an hour if you know what you're doing and and by now you should be knowing exactly what is what but let me continue um so i don't fluff too much let me see what we can do what we can do if you remember we have our heart state what happens if the little guy is hurt if he touches the you know the Im impacts the little slug let's say so 
I wish this would be like, you know, red or something like that. Um, so I'm also maybe going to add something like, ouch, something a bit more explicit so we can see that, hey, this is actually happened. Cool. So this is our hard guy. And so what, what we can do, it's quite easy. You see, we're moving our thing. What we need to detect is really what happens if our hero panel touches or overlays or underlays our enemy panel. And there is this built-in function, but you would want to add the cases immediately on that default state where you're moving that little slug and just leave it a simple case. So we can say that this is default case. You don't have to name it if you don't want to, but it always helps. And then I'm going to copy the same case. And I'm just going to do, well, actually, should we attach it to the hero case or should we attach it to, okay, let, let me just try attaching it to a slug case. I wonder if we can affect the ever dynamic panel. Um, without because you can imagine if you're going to have 20 different slugs row by row and you're going to check it on your hero your hero if statements or conditions are it's just going to be endless list condition one two three four five all checking if they are touching this v slug or or the other enemies but if you attach that logic to every enemy then it stays with the enemy until it reaches the hero so the hero is always just going to be clean with no actions to it. But the every enemy you add, you're just going to have to copy these bits and then detect. I think it's going to be much, much easier and scale easier if you want to do end to end design, end to end architecture for a game. And so here, instead of default, I'm going to check if it's touching. Check if, well, actually, just let, let's say check status or something like that so status of a slug if if it touches the thing and i'm gonna add logic with that invisible button i wish we would make it visible but hey you cannot ask for everything actually is improving very slowly and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say area of the widget of this meaning our slug is over area of the widget and then we're just going to select our hero boom i don't know if it's going to be over or under i don't know which one is which is which but once it does that we need to add an action and then set panel state if it's over of course and not enemy hero to hurting simple as that and we don't need to move it actually, because we just need to detect if you toggle it to if, so there's if both are true and they run in parallel. If area of this is over area of hero, then turn hero to hurting. That's a basic condition, uh, basic, basic rationale. Let's check it out. Do, 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 do. Boom, 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 boom. It does work, it does work pretty well, but our hero is hurting badly so we need to reverse it so basically after we turn it to hurting let's add another action and wait for i don't know how long maybe half maybe a second or two maybe it's um one and a half seconds or so roughly speaking and add another set of panel and let's make the hero itself to go back into the running state right which actually reminds me we haven't we haven't changed the hero boom as you can see it reverts back we haven't changed the jump of the hero to the ever panel so what we to to the ever state of a dynamic panel so just for a cosmetic change i'm going to do two things i'm going to reduce the, oops i'm going to reduce the wait time before we reverse the hurting to 1 second and also I'm going to just go off to a page and I'm going to do to do, 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 do. if if we press the key, we also going to add an action that we set the panel state of the hero to jumping. 
So every time we press the key, it goes to jumping. Every time we release the key, so the key goes up, we go back into running state like so. Kaboom. Let's see if that actually works out for us. Okay. Ah. As you can see, it sort of works. There is a bit of a timing issue, but. Okay, it just flew out. I think because I need to return it. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, it, it always could be better, but there is also like, you know, how much time do you want to spend? So this is quite simple. Now, I, d I don't remember what was the Google's game, that Chrome game, what was the logic behind it? Let me just try to pull it back. I don't know where the screen went now. Uh, da, 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 da. I think what we did was that as much as you go, let's say if you go 10 seconds, it's going to add like 100 points. I think it would add several points as you progress until you fail. And that's when it connects your high score. And if you remember from my rough wireframe um, just a few minutes ago, we have this text field for that score. So if you go for, I don't know, for three seconds, maybe it's 30 or something along those lines, and it, it increases the score until you fail. And then it logs it at a high score. Sorry. And we also need the global variable for this because we need to contain that score somewhere. So I'm going to attempt to do just that, I guess. Let's see where we get on with that. Um, let me just add a really quick score field. So you know what's up. And I guess I, I'm not even going to... Let's see, that's, that should be good. And then I'm just going to make this one as 0, 0, 0, 0, or something along those lines. I don't think we're going to have more than that, but hey. And I'm centering it just in case it increases the numbers so it doesn't overlap or it doesn't break the line. I think it should be pretty, pretty fine like that see a question awesome is this going to be recorded for later yes if you joined a bit later um you can always check out it's going to be published live i think it, it takes like an hour or two for it to reappear because live stream live streams have to be processed but you can definitely check it out and i would recommend you so you know exactly what we're after um, if you would just start implementing as we are here it's definitely going to break because there is a lot of you know, architectural bits, which interlink together, basically. Um, and so score, imagine that this is our score field, this is our text field, and I'm just going to name it as per usual cardinal thing to name um, our actual bits. So I'm just going to say score one or something along those lines. And then, you know, eventually we can add a high score as well. But I just want to finish off our our journey here just to incrementing this score and then updating the text field. So um, what I'm going to do next is create a global variable as well. So if I go to projects, global variables, um, this is bread and butter of Axure anyways, you should know it by now. Um, we're just going to say score. And this is where we were going to keep our high score or, or score or anything, you know, whatever we're working on. Um, let me just check again. I think I missed it out. We need to put the default value, which let's put it zero. Um, and then on page loaded, I'm just going to add an action and I'm going to say set text. Uh, score value of variable and just score. And now every time we reload, it's going to start with a zero instead of triple zero. As you can see, it immediately pushed it. And then I can, oops. Our little Martian is going crazy. And <clears throat> once that's done, now we need to think of how we can calculate it. I know how to represent it, but it's almost like every time, every second passes, we can add an additional counter to it, right? 
So we almost need to have a gate, I guess, of how we add the timing to it. Hmm, that's an interesting challenge. So page loaded would initiate some sort of countdown. And if it's moving, it keeps on moving, it keeps on adding. I think I know how to do this. So we can attach the movement to our background. As you can see, it's moved background bit 40, yada, yada. This is going to be re-triggered every time, every half a second is going to be re-triggered. And so what we can do is just attach it to this because every half a second we're moving it by 40 pixels down, right? So we're just going to need to be quite specific here, but I'm going to add action and I'm going to say uh, da, 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 set variable value score to value two, 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 two. we can go into our functions add local variable and add local variable the value of variable of score so we pick the old value of variable and then we can do something like plus 10 or something like that so every half a second or actually let's do plus five every half a second it should add five to it like so and then add action set text and then we're going to select our text field and set it to value of that variable and i'm going to explain to what i am meaning here so behind the scenes we have this container which hosts that value right and as we progress through our timeline, we just attach this arbitrary to our background. Every half a second, it's going to add five, five to the existing global variable. So you can imagine if after half a second, it's 15, it's going to keep on adding five. Then it's going to become 20. Then it's going to add five, five, five. And then it's going to like multiply and compound it. Um, and then as we do that, it's going to set that text into a score. And now I'm going to cross my fingers because I think this should work. Hmm, nope. And I know why I think. As you can see, there is a bit of a mishmash. Let me see if I can select our background. I think it's going to be the syntax, which is not ideal. So what we can do is I think we need to wrap it in the two brackets pause this video if you're copying word by word and now let's try again sort of works but it, it also doesn't right <laughs> it keeps on adding as we pro progress <sighs> hmm why not the whole thing okay let's try that out maybe you're right you're you are probably right um let me just also skip the yeah you're right kim thanks a lot so we are basically incrementing incrementing the high score here and as you can see as our hero is going to progress we are going to just add, you can make it 20, you can make it 30, you can make it 100, whatever you want to make it. And you can also make it probably a bit more increment if you want to add another counter, which is like a hidden counter. But for now, let me just show you how I would reset it so that it you basically every time you would want to, every time you, you did, every time you touch the slug, that evil pink guy, um, it would need to reset this to zero because you can just continue your game. You don't need to restart. It's just, let's keep it easy for now and simple. You would want to reset it, but also add a high score, which is basically next to it. And we can just remove it for the time being, just like Google does. And let me just make it maybe something like that, like black, whatever for, for now it should be okay. So what we can do, we need to find where we detect if our hero is touching this uh, uh, slug. If they are basically colliding, then we can actually reverse and rejig the score. So let me see, where did we detect hero to hurting? Again here, check status. 
So every time our hero touches this yellow slug, oh, yellow, pink slug, it should make him hurt when we reset into a hero. So while we wait after we make him hurt, we should reset the high score. And so we're going to add an action to it and we are going to say uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. where is that uh, set variable value one of the last options I don't know if you can see it on my screen score and we're gonna set it to zero so that's simple as that it's just gonna reset the value let's test it out right so let, let's let's just fail let's see what happens okay it resetted the value there was some if there was a bit of a break we might need to wait uh, or see how we can wait but as you can see it restarted until the slug went ahead but now i'm thinking if we reset the value for global variable we also need to immediately showcase it here because there was a, a little bit of a break and i don't like that it started from five afterwards so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna push it up but I also afterwards going to add another action, set text for the score one. Now we have double score one and score two, which is going to be a high score by a way that hitting hidden bit. So I'm going to just do, 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 do where did it go? Yep. Here set text score one to value of variable and it's a bit of a you know you might think that it's overdoing it overthinking it but you always want to reject r reset your value so that w even if we set the score to zero we need to redisplay it immediately and i think i don't know if in, on live stream you're gonna be able to notice but let's see if that works hmm still didn't i wonder if we need to add more waiting time so if we wait one second set well or maybe there is a bit of a mismatch hmm anyway this is okay Let, let's keep it for now because i think there is you know one of those bits where you would need to then spend 15 minutes thinking of how to sort it but one thing what we definitely need for sure in this session is before we reset our score to zero we need to land our value of global variable to this text and so what I'm going to do is when we check the hero stuff and all that jazz, I'm just going to copy that set text item and I'm just going to move it up. Let's say it, the order here, it does sort of matter. It depends what you want to achieve. I'm just going to select our high score and just leave it at that. I might want to make a new global variable for high score specifically. And just because the moment you're going to override it with another one and global available resets, I'm afraid that both of the scores are going to become zero. And so it's always good to comp 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 mer blah, blah, blah. comp I'm, I'm, I'm blurring my words now, but high score, I'm going to make it zero by default. And the moment I'm going to touch the hero here, I'm going to basically set the high score text into a value of variable score high score just like that and just before that i also are going to want to set the variable score the variable value of the score into the high score that's going to be the easiest way probably for us to move on and so i'm going to say set variable value and as per usual, I'm going to recap that because some of it might be a bit confusing and I totally get it. I'm going to say high score value of variable of score. So what I'm doing really is I'm going to do this. I'm going to basically the moment I'm going to touch as a hero, that pink slug, it's going to take the value of the score It's going to put it into the high score through this text functionality. Then it's going to set our hero into hurting mode. Wait one second, then set the score into the zero and then move on with that. And I'm really hoping this is going to work because it could be that we are in an infinite loop where, let's say, if I move our background, it just keeps on moving and then it keeps on hammering the numbers. And if so, we might need to leave it for later. 
see a comment from Kim. Should you have a check that the high score is lower than the score? You could potentially. You could do that, yeah. But I think it would be a step up, right? Let's see if this works first and then we can think of if we can do it more. Let's see if that works. Boom. As you can see, there was a little bit of a glitch and I know exactly why, because I think the in between when it swapped, let me let me show you again. So it counts pretty quickly, right? When it touches and when we add an extra five, even if the score before we touched was um, 35. And I think that's just like encoding. It's exactly the same how let, let me just check what happens if I let's see do the jumping. Oops, I think I select I touched it a little bit. It does 40. Hmm. Let's see what we can do. Kind of need to fix it before we wrap up. Any ideas? Anyone on a chat on on a live stream? Anyone has any ideas of what am I doing wrong? It could be because of the positioning. Because the moment I'm checking, it could be that it's too late already. And when it counts the next number, that's why we get instead of 35, we get 40. I wonder what's what's the case or maybe. Maybe I need to maybe I need to push the actual value after we select that it's on top of the hero into the value. But this, this is also a big question. This is something I think we might need to unpack behind the scenes and maybe come back later. If, unless you have any other ideas, I see that you have a chat on the, you can check if a high score is lower, of course, yeah. So if the score is zero, the high score is empty for now. We're, we collude with different things and then that's where the hero is set to hurting, that's easy. One second goes by, we set the score into the zero. But between those two, there is also a split second where that extra five is being logged. And that's where it's a bit worrying. I wonder if the waiting time, if we would increase the waiting time, I'd, I wonder if that would it could be because of a split second in between, but I don't know if that's even going to matter at all. No, it still goes by. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see again. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's leave it for now. We probably going to need to do it in part two to, you know, deconstruct it. Basically, I think it, as is, it does work. But the only thing what doesn't work is what happens in between these cases. I think this has to maybe be split and you might want to have a separate logging device, which adds five or adds 10 or so. Is it is he hitting the collide condition more than once? He could be. Well, technically he he's hitting the collide condition every half a second because we are basically checking the status as it's moving. Every half a second it moves 40 pixels is checking if if it has touched the actual hero, right? So if our hero goes there and we are even like here and there, it would still check and then reload, I guess. Maybe you're right, Kim. I wonder if that could be the case. But for now, I just want to leave it. I, I want to do something else. I noticed that we might need to calibrate of how our hero moves. So if if let's say if I press our key and hold it, I'm basically adding a weight to it, as you can see. But if I just put just one tap, like so, it touches our slug, even if, if it's by the pixel, 
even if it's like you know it, it does a curve as it jumps it still touches it by a little bit so what i'm maybe we need to a bit calibrate of what's happening to it because i'm afraid that you know our players wouldn't know exactly why it happened unless they go overboard slamming the keyboard hmm <laughs> it needs to fly off okay so let's see what happens here so we are saying that the hero goes out by 160 as a, as a fixed aim so I'm just gonna increase that just to see if that makes a difference whatsoever let's see if that does if I just tap once of course it's it's a bit that's a bit too late it's a bit maybe perfectionist. Maybe it's okay to allow the force to, to, you know, to log it as I want it to be. So for example, if I press it, you know, hard, it goes out, it allows it. But I think we also need to add a ceiling for our players not to confuse themselves. And no, I can't, I, I can't beat it. So we might need to do something else let me see if what happens if we let's say add 300 if that makes any difference whatsoever or is it that we need to increase the coming down speed so that our slug actually passes the the thing and again now it's a bit picky nitpicking details but i just want to see if that actually works nope no okay let's see if i return it back by the way if anyone has any suggestions of how to calibrate this we could also address it let me see if i return it to 180 and just maybe make it a bit slower so the slug can pass it you would also probably would want to make these things a bit variable okay now it sort of works but as you can see i needed to slow it down so it calibrates the thing but at least i can beat my own game <laughs> i don't have to be stuck as a player okay it, it does work it's almost like a, a bit sluggish low gravity super mario but it does work and we have a score counting cool all right so what i'm gonna do i think it's time to wrap it up what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make probably a part number two i don't know if it's gonna be live or not you have to leave the comments down below to let me know if you like this and you want a second part where we can maybe go in depth and play with the high score we can fix the bug with um you know passing to the high score because there's five extra bits and kind of tie in the loose ends if you have any questions please free to shout out down below as well um, i'm gonna try to address it but Thanks so much for your time. I mean, this is this is quite, you know, rudimentary, very simple game, very simple platformer, but it does the trick. You can kind of play it if you want to. And then, you know, it's up to you to add more conditions to it. It's up to you to make it a bit more complex. You know, you, you can do a lot with these type of things and Axure allows you to just use variables and animation and movement and things of that nature and you know keyboard input as well which not every uh, prototyping tool would so go ahead get after it make your own games and i'll see you next time thanks everyone thanks so much and yeah until next time